but he's in the middle. Checks back against Carter and scores. That is a typical for the Amina Margot. Mark quickly gets it back again. Oh, what a goal! Well, that sums up her season. To another uh, episode of Vic Haker's Wonderland, but instead of the usual <laughs> domestic leads, we are now looking at our girls in the international watch. Um, as always, I am joined by the magnificent Matt. How are you, Matt? Uh, I've been a bit of a roller coaster today, but I am back and happy to talk women's football as always. Brilliant. And I'm also joined by the awesome Adam. Don't let that go to your head. How are you, mate? Good night. Too late for that, Lottie. Oh, damn it. <laughs> um, no, it's 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 all good. Um, for those of you um, watching on, on the YouTube know that I, I typically dial in from hotels and um, I'm in a new one. And by the looks of things, um, the, not only is the, the internet connection a bit stronger for this one. Um, so I can actually well, see can, you, which is really I know, great. This is the first time that viewers will have seen me since. Not, um, not, not, not that the audio listeners care. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 but this is the. We do care about you, though, now, guys. Don't worry. Absolutely. After my time away, this is the first time I've actually been able to open up the webcam and get it properly working. So this this bodes well for the next um, few months, which is good. And yeah, Matt, we've got proof of life now. <laughs> <laughs> we've got we've got. It's been a long long shifts, um, so that's why I'm very much looking forward to doing, um, putting that to one side and then tucking into. Uh, What's been a very uh, interesting international break so far? Oh, no, definitely. I think I think first things first. We need to start with the Concacaf Gold Cup, um, where Emily <laughs> Fox is with the USA, and over with Canada is Chloe Lacasse and Sabrina D'Angelo. Starting with Canada, Chloe Lacasse and Sabrina D'Angelo are in Group C with Costa Rica, Paraguay, and El Salvador. Um, they both kicked off the tournament in fine form. In Canada's first victory, we saw Chloe Lacasse start in the midfield and Sabrina on the bench um, as Ca- Canada's number one, Caelan Sheridan, got the start. Ed- Adriana Leon was on fire with a hat-trick and in that first game alongside Olivia Smith, who made it 4-0. In Canada's second game against El Salvador, both Lacasse and D'Angelo did start, um, with Chloe fly- flying down the right wing, cutting it back past Ilali Jasmine Hernandez Represa. And a wicked left foot shot to open the game. Um, the game ended 6 0 over in Texas with goals from Jordan uh, Hutima, Adriana Leon, Olivia Smith, and Kadisha Buchanan. You can catch Canada's next game on 28th of February um, on the Conacaf uh, YouTube channel or Conacaf uh, Go. Um, it will be 11 pm UK time tomorrow night, or depending on when you're listening to it, the 28th of February. Um, Matt, has, has Chloe taken her Arsenal form over to Canada? She certainly I believe, has. I believe she's got three assists in that game as well. Yes, and it just shows you to how vital she was because she was very prominent in changing wings and just being able to set up um, opportunities. She was just absolutely Dominican Republic were running around like hellish chickens trying to figure out how to stop Chloe and Cass and I think it's going to be I know this is more of Friday talk but I think that's going to be a miss on Sunday um, absolutely but... massive miss for me especially on that left hand side if I'm honest with you um, massive fan of Chloe at the minute but elsewhere in Group B Emily Fox is with the USA um, they've started their tournament with a 5-0 win over the Dominican Republic I think the game you were referring to was Costa Rica, Matt. Ah, um, I, I do apologise. <laughs> Although Emily Fox was on the bench, she came on on the 46th minute for Emily Sonnet um, when they were 2 0 up. Uh, the goals came from a brace from Olivia Moultrie and Lynn Williams, uh, Jenna, Jenna Nicewonga, and Alex Morgan with a penalty. Uh, match days two saw Emily Fox again come off the bench to replace Casey Kruger in the 61st minute. 
Uh, the result um, against Argentina in that game was a 4-0 scoreline with a brace from Jaden Shaw and goals from Alex Morgan and a penalty from Lindsay Horan. There was one more game this early in the early hours of this morning um, before the quarterfinals. The USA took on Mexico, which took um, and saw Emily Fox get her first start of the tournament. And she got her first full 70 minutes. Um, but the USA went to lose 2-0. Uh, with uh, to Mexico with uh, Elizabeth Oval uh, opening the score in the first half and Myra Peleo Bernal sealing the victory and added stoppage time. Adam, I know you caught some of this game. What were your thoughts on the Mexico game and uh, the USA? Yeah, this was a nice surprise to wake up to um, because I think as we can all agree after the World Cup shenanigans of Sweden and Nina Hurti. Um, sorry, American fans, but there is nothing better than watching. There's nothing better than watching a giant fall. And in case the USA, it is, it is even sweeter. I think there's some really interesting sort of um, discourse about this now. Is this is this the end of USA sort of dominance on the game? Are we starting, you know, first it was Sweden, now it's Mexico. Uh, you know, have, have we finally caught up with what the years was the the standard bearer? You know, they were the, they were the, they made the footprints that we tread after. Um, I, I saw the goals. The first one is, um, so a bit of a calamity at the back. There's a miscommunication with the defence and, and the goalkeeper and, and the, the fair play to the striker if he takes it very well. I, memory serves the second goal. I think it was a bit of a sort of screamer at the end. I think it was a very well taken finish. Um, unfortunately, I've only seen the goal, so I've not seen the wider context of the game. Like I said, I only caught it before I went to work. Um, I haven't actually been following this tournament at all, so I was kind of hoping, oh, is it, you know, how close... I think they're already out of the group, haven't they? Well, they're through, sorry. They're into the next round. So this was kind of a... A dead rubber in that sense. So, the, unfortunately, for the qualification, in, is not in uh, in jeopardy for them. So they'll go through. But I want Emily Fox back as soon as possible. So I'm, I'm kind of looking at. Do. She's going to be yeah, for, on Sunday. Absolutely, we've seen how great she's been for for us since her arrival. Which it, 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 we've seen this quite a few signings. Some have taken um, a while to settle. Not with Fox. She's straight in. We know and just been electric. So we know how good she is. And. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, the draw, how's it? I don't know if you, you've obviously been following it better than me. Do any of you know who they're likely to play? I haven't the looked at the draw so far. I was going to save right. that for the next pod. Um, cool, that's fine. Yes, watch. It does look um, like it's very similar where uh, the win- group winner will play the group runner up in group uh, in the next group so, and vice versa. Yeah. I need so to. So, the USA group wins because of that, because of that defeat, are they runners up in that group? Then, now, yeah, they... runners up. Yeah. So yeah. I'm assuming to Mexico. Yeah. 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 Ooh. So all of a sudden, somebody who's won a group has got the uh, got a, a, a plan to play the USA. Um, yeah. That's, no, that's the rumour has it is that Emma Hayes is communicating with the US team at this point. Um, some US fans I have spoken to seem to think so because they haven't had a consistent start in 11. Do you guys think that's possible? Although I mean, she's... But... It, it bodes well for, for if this is how her tenure is going to be. I hope, I hope it's a case of starting as she means to go on because this could be absolutely fantastic. Um, but Adam, uh, you know, when Emma Hayes wants something, she don't get it. Uh, yeah, um, like, like the Arsenal job. Um, uh, I, I do. Oh, I, mean, I, I was referring to Champions League, but you know. No, okay, I, 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 I know you were. I, I know you were. <laughs> um, I, I think it's, um, I don't think so. I think that's a bit sort of cons- conspiracy theorist and I think that's an element of trying to find rationale in what for many USA fans is irrationality, which is the American team not doing well. You know, they're coming second in their group, losing to Mexico. I think it's, this is, I think it's just like it's their second defeat at home. It's their their first defeat on American soil or in a competitive game. Or there was something since like Canada or something, there was something crazy going around. I know, we be Americans thinking that she believes a few seasons ago, but it was, there was some statistic going around. This is a very rare event. I think it was in the Gold Cup. It's very rare that the USA. 14 years that it's been since they lost to Mexico. Hey, that's it. That's the one. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it, it, yeah it, exactly. It's a bit like um, the Newcastle for the men's stat. They haven't won there since 2013. Uh, 11. Uh, 11. 20, Newcastle haven't won since 2011. Yeah, since 2010. Uh, 2010. I knew it was close to that number, but yeah, yeah. it's just one of those mad stats you don't really forget, but you occasionally get the number wrong. Um, so, but, yeah, I, I hope I don't think Emma Hayes is communicating from behind the scenes. I think this is 
this is just this is where the team are at the moment. They're in complete transition. The big the big the big hitters are, are stepping down or, or have stepped down. There's a lot of young talent coming through, and it's going to lead to results like this where everything's not quite gelling. That you know, as, as the old guard leaves and the new guard comes through. So, yeah, it, it, it is where it's at the moment. Say the USA are in desperate need of new blood, so to speak, as the old guard need to sort of vacate as politely as I can put it. Well, Alex, Alex Morgan's been scoring the goals for them, so she said, and you know, she. she My she, thing she, with that it. is. I don't know if you guys saw it. it was her tweet when Mia F- official done her ACL. No, no, it was no. a sorry, not sorry, but I'm on this squad sort of tweet. Yeah, and I oh, really yes. didn't like that. And I'm one retirement mm. I am looking forward to now is her. There was something about, um, yeah, it's was, it was quite sort of petty, wasn't it? And it was sort it of. It really was, especially when we, we've got like a, pa- I hate to say, but a pandemic of ACLs going on. Mm. Mm. across like all women's leagues i yeah, think it's it, really it, petty and unnecessary it's tasteless it's tasteless and i, I do wonder if this is uh, to describe this. the usa team is, is probably the most hyper competitive team but because that's why they're so good that's why the best team is that every player is fighting right. every every teammate is basically an enemy if you are a right back and someone else is a right back they are your mortal enemy and you can because they are taking the seat that you want. They are taking your place. So it should be like that, that for every team, but not to the point where you hate each other and you've got that. That's, yeah, the, that, that's, that's my issue. But that's it does remind me of like the American films when it's always like as, as, as those underdog stories. Like um, I always think of the Mighty Duck, the Mighty Ducks, and you've always got like you've got D five, the worst of it, the worst worst team, and then you so on and so on, and. It does seem that is literally the mentality when it comes to the US and sports from grassroots all the way up. Yes. So they're trying to, so I think the best way I can describe it is there are parents out there at this moment in time who want their kid to be a Premier League or WSL star. Not all of them are going to make it, but instead of letting them and have their fun, they have, they're have they going around, they're making contact with scouts, say, yeah, come to this game, come to watch my kid, or making sure to mm-hmm. overcoach their players. And because of that, they're getting that mentality that I need to be a winner every single day. Yeah. And sooner or later, that gives you the burnout. And I just wonder if mentality, to, uh, mentally, this is like a mental block now because they're too busy fighting almost each other to, in a, to get that first yeah, team to get spot, that spot rather than fight the team that yeah, they want so, points off or the, the win for the game. So where, whereas you might see with with Arsenal, it, Laura and Emily will be a bit, they'll they'll have their fight their fight here and there, but it'll be a oh, bit yeah, more no, friendly and calmer and relaxed. Yeah, it's a bit like Beth and Lacasse. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, can, uh, you can say Leo Volti and Kyra and then yeah. Kim and Palova, but you can also mix those combinations up. Um, I just hope we don't see any of that attitude from Emily when well, Laura Reinvoita no, does come I, th- I think em- the way Emily's been doing her interviews and everything beforehand is that she's actually shows she is very down to earth and the fact that she's come out and said that she was willing to come out and experience different things, she's going to have a different mentality to the Alex Morgans of the, and I think, I think it's Tobin and Christian Press and some of the others that have yeah. Megan Rapino. Yeah, so some, some of the older ones that have that mentality of I need to be there, I need to be in that number one on the, on the uh, they'll call it a roster, but a team sheet. What's, what's interesting there is with Emily Fox, if you compare it to, because most of the American players play in the NWSL, yeah. and if they if they have come up the NWSL, it's usually on a loan to Leon or a loan in the WSL, maybe to play during the off season or during the pandemic, and then get to go back yeah. again. A bit like Whereas Kimmy Emily, going them in the summer. Yeah. Yeah. Emily has signed to play here. The only other player I can think of who is just committed long term to play out of the NWSL is Lindsay Horan, who's with Leon at the moment. And I think that that is, I think that for me, it could be something minor, but for me that shows how a different mentality to the rest of the team who will happily stay in America and play with America and, and they, she wants to come over here. And I think that, I think for me, that's interesting. And I think maybe it shows that she is, she thinks maybe slightly differently to how. Uh, American compatriots maybe uh, see the game. No, absolutely. I can see where you guys are coming from. I mean, I don't mm. know. I've, I've, I can only go on the last few games of Emily Fox. I haven't seen any Arsenal content from the Arsenal um, content creators yet. 
over at Arsenal themselves where they do the videos like they used to like they usually well, those... do. We end up usually talking about them for about half an hour every podcast. Yeah. Um, I'm just cool. waiting for some of that just to shed some light on her character, if that makes sense. But it's also in the back of my mind, I don't want that from her. Could we just could we just quickly yeah, can we just have a shout out to the USA admin who has been putting out the Emily Fox to America chart like in the tweets when and I thought that just that is just I mean it's amazing but I mean pat on the back to obviously the Arsenal fans for a chart that is uh is obviously taken the American fandom they've taken they've taken them out on board as well and even yeah and if the admin is repping it then you know it's a it's a good one so that was really nice to see absolutely I still need to learn that one I haven't quite got my head around it just only on the content that I've seen it's only about the seats for the for Sunday's game and the Google Pixel ads which yeah. um th- they got nice lovely boxes by the way which uh yeah, you don't I'd see really like every day detailing on the back of that phone I'd love a phone with the Arsenal badger on on the back that would be and your initials <laughs> and a number of your choice <laughs> oh absolutely absolutely um but we are going to hop over back to our side of the pond uh we're going to start off with the with the or uh, right with now. the Netherlands uh Vivian Miedemar and Victoria um will well did go head to head with Leia Kadena in the UEFA's league oh, UEFA Nations. <laughs> Nations League Nations in the semi final on the 23rd of February um Spain are heading to the Olympics after beating the Dutch 3-0 uh with goals from Jenny Hermoso um Atania Bonmati and Ono Batile uh, Viv did start for the Netherlands in that game. She was played for 45 minutes by Stockbridge Triumph, whereas Victoria Palova was not on the bench at all. Um, as France are our hosts, they've automatically qualified for the Olympics, although they're in the final of the UEFA Nations League, League with Spain. Um, due to them beating um, Germany to one in the semi final, the first pl- third place playoff will be played on 28th February for Spain final spot in the Olympics a uh, little bit of breaking news today they both Victoria and Vivian Miedemar have returned to Arsenal will not be taking part in the second game against Germany um, Andreas Jonka has confirmed that they are not recovered in time for the game uh, they've not had enough recovery time um, I think my question is and to you guys will they be ready for Sunday or is the sched- scheduling getting too much for our players, especially yes. those coming back from major injuries? The reason um, why I'd say they're going to be ready, sorry, Adam, just quickly, is that um, they'll be essentially what they played Friday night, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. So I imagine that they'll have flown over back tonight. They'll be training in the morning and that gives them plenty of time. Whether or not they'll be starting is another issue. Um, if I'm honest, I don't think Vic would probably start in this one, just because I'd imagine it would be Leah and Kim in the middle. It will, but it's a case of what's happening with Viv is a bit of a worry because she has had a bit of setback. We've seen Leah Williamson as well have a bit she of setback as well. She did cover 5.5 kilometres in that game against Spain, which is more than what most male players cover on ground, along with <laughs> Laika Martins as well. Um, Adam, do you think she's she's getting enough? Re- Viv's getting enough recovery I, time, and as I well as Palova so. getting enough rest in between the games because she's been the solid starter for us recently. I think with Viv, I think it may be hyper cautious because of we know she's recovered from an injury, and yes, there's a bit to play for with the third place playoff in the Olympics, but I think it, given the situation, I think saying no, we we can we're not going to win the Nations League. Third place playoff would be nice, and it's going to be against Germany. And the Netherlands versus Germany, if, yeah, it's never Germany's never in the third place playoff. That's going to be very special. Just to be the rivalry there is, is is big, and I think it's probably I think it's over cautiousness, and I think that's good. It's uh, I think Viv comes back, good enough for break. She might be fit enough for the derby, maybe off the bench. I think we just as you said before, she had a setback injury. She hasn't. We said it before, Beth Mead is, is a miracle in terms of how quickly she has just hit the ground running and she's away and she's scoring and ACLs don't work like that, <laughs> uh, especially the recovery. So with Viv, a bit more cautious, making sure that she's right. Uh, I'm all for that. The real mystery is Palova because Palova's been on fire for us this season. 
and there's injuries that come out of nowhere. And it, it, I don't think they've really said what the nature of the injury is. Just she's injured, and now she's coming back. Um, the flip side is, is we, we've got the options. If need be, we could put Kim Little at 10 and we could stick Clara Cooney cross next to Leah Velti in the midfield. Um, maybe a bit too defensive, considering we're playing Spurs and we may want to you know, go at it. Maybe it's a discussion for the next uh, the pod later in the week. We have got the options in the midfield if we need to, but I am worried uh, about that one. Hopefully, hopefully it is it is just something minor um, because you know, we are we are we are winning the battle with injuries, not just with ACLs, but just injuries in general. Um, we don't want to have another step back like that. If you do look at some of the other teams, sorry, Lossy, that mm. Chelsea are currently having a bit of an injury crisis already. Mm. I know we'll talk about England in a minute, but the fact Frank Kirby's had to go go back again, Lee Williamson's had to come back uh, home. I imagine that they'll both be resting and making sure that they're ready for their retrospective matches um, all, all weekend. But it's just one of those things that's going to hit them. I, it, Man City have been a bit lucky to not have that many injuries as much well apart from, apart from Jill Ward Jill Ward Ward. Ward. <laughs> but, I mean apart I know Jill's quite they got, the depth, they got the depth to cover Jill at the moment yes it's yeah just the they... one it's not a crisis like Chelsea and Arsenal no. Arsenal was touch wood and what we're seeing sorry we should say with the Jill Ward injury it's Jess Park has now risen she's risen to uh, stepped in well. and and it's and they, they, they're playing probably maybe even better so you know it, it, that's I don't think injuries are positive, but that they Man City have got the depth as you say, and they've got a player like Jess Parker can step in, and their title challenge goes on. Um, with Chelsea, well, they kept <laughs> my, my, my Mayra, uh, Ramirez away from um, the Conaca Gold Cup, so yeah. yeah. Um, really random question for you guys: Will the Netherlands sail past the Germans? come tomorrow i i think no i think no just because of i think that they've got severe burnout and that's very similar to us i in some way i imagine it would have been the same way had we have gone over and done the nation's league semi-finals uh we would have been in the same boat i don't think we would have actually won i think the fact that we've managed to have some sort of break um, which has now been confirmed. I don't know if you're going to come up to that later or not. You are. Right, well, I'll leave that later then. <laughs> but but there are, we'll talk about it later, but basically we thought we were going to get a summer off and no internationals or what. Yeah, um, yeah let's I... not go there with that. With yeah. me. I'm very annoyed with it at the moment. <laughs> I was going to say, I think Netherlands maybe could because I think maybe we're over... Estimate, estimating the Germans, um, we should remember they had a they had a calamitous World Cup. They've sacked mm-hmm. their they sacked uh, Maria uh, von Tessenberg. I think who's actually taken up medical leave actually. And yeah, I think she's um, had his own there. So I don't know who's managing at the moment, but they lost to France. Um, France obviously had a decent outfit, but Alexander um, is also still missing, which is interesting to see. Yeah. Just um, on the Germans so, quickly. Sorry, Adam. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, do, it will do them more for the their preparations next summer compared to the Netherlands. I think the Netherlands have got their set team than Germany. The thing is, who do we want to miss out on the Olympics more in terms of Arsenal players? I think we want the Nev- we want to have the likes of Miedemar and Palova not at the Olympics, yeah. which is really cruel on them because I know that the, the Netherlands obviously had the Tokyo Olympics and they got they lost some penalties USA that stung a lot that was um, Serena's that was the last game of Serena Beekman so that's going to hurt so I know there's a lot of there's a great desire to, to play in this Olympics but from a very selfish Arsenal perspective you don't want any of our Arsenal players there um, and as memory says I don't think we've got a German contingent anymore uh, within our within our team so if the only player that ends up playing in the Olympics from Arsenal is Lea Kadena, I'll be very happy I think we'll all be happy with that outcome um, but as I said earlier, Legatina will be in the final for the UEFA Nations League against France on the 28th of February. The kickoff will be uh, 7 p.m. Central European time, which will be 6 p.m. on in the UK. If you are listening from the UK, if not, please go and check your time zones. Um, 
after beating the Netherlands, uh, Lea Gadina and Spain are off to the Olympics in France this summer too. So there's one definite confirmed Arsenal player off to the Olympics in this summer. Will Spain beat France? Yes. Hmm. Yes, no, 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 no question. Sorry, Spain. I, just nothing else. Yes. Yeah, yeah, there is. I mean, France. Are, yes, they're talented. We know. We, we know the talent they have in their, in their team. Um, they are the serial um, underperformers in tournaments. They have the talent. They'll go so deep, and then they will fumble it. Spain are the world champions. You know, I, we know they're the world champions because they showed the showed why um, in the summer. And I don't think anything has changed um, in the team. I know there's been changes behind the scenes with the higher management, which is fantastic. And, you know, quite frankly, they can all go in the bin, those in the those in power. And it looks like that's happening. They've got a new manager in. Um, but I, I, it's, just, it's the same Spain, you know. We were saying about the Netherlands, about, oh, could they beat Germany? I think to judge the Netherlands on losing 3-0 to Spain, I think that's that's slightly twisted because Spain, I, it's not the Netherlands are bad, it's just that Spain are that good. But you got, you know, when you got the they got the Ballon d'Or, uh, you know, in that team, um, Bon Matty, and you got the likes of Bates as well. You, just the, the the talent flowing in there, I can't see anything other than it when they win against the French. If the French do win it, fair play to them. <laughs> I mean, that's an incredible result for that team, and they would do the wonders. But you no, know, Spain, Spain for me at the moment. When you do look at it, uh, you, I, I kind of felt, I felt during that World Cup that Spain didn't really get into a uh, a higher gear, that Barcelona gear, where they would dominate teams. They didn't feel like they were in first gear, did they? Just, yeah, just pretty much. I'll take the final, essentially, go and score in the first 10, 15 minutes, and then we'll just sit back and defend. I was like, that's not Spain. That's not Spain. That just seems like it to be um, a very Sunday league set up, if I'm honest. Um, usually when you think of Spain, you think of the ticky tacker football the the one two passes the three touches and then then you play it up and on that third touch you play it to someone else you're passing teams to death and when you lose it you go and press them back as quickly as possible to win that ball and it's not really coming together and it's a really odd setup at the moment so if spain are able to win i have a feeling that that's setting them nicely up for the euros next summer I would say with Spain is they will they will have they will have the ball. France will not see the ball. The way that Spain carousel the ball around the team, regardless of maybe you know, attacking and goals, they will have all the possession, and I think that will give them the edge. Just we, before we move on, I guess I'm going to move quickly move on onto this. Um, did anybody see a tweet that uh, there was an interview that An- uh, Atiana Bonmati did about um, the Spain post World Cup? Um, comparing it to England and the Euros. She did a, an interview with oh, yeah. the AFP. I don't know if you've seen this at all. No. Uh, came up it. It basically said that she was complaining about the lack of impact of Spain's World Women's World Cup win. It says England's Euro impact makes her jealous in comparison. Unfortunately, I can't say a lot of things have changed. We have the example of the English. When they won the Euro in 2022, we saw a real change following their success at the nat- nationwide level. It had repercussions. And there was more investment in the domestic league. The stadiums are full when England play. It makes me jealous because I can't say the same thing has happened here. There's still so many things to do here. And I have the impression that the World Cup has not served any purpose. Which I think is a real well, shame. I think, I think that is, it is a shame. But it's also yeah. a case of we were the host nation and we won it. And I think that has a big it's impact. It's like a double jeopardy, going, double, yeah, double whammy. It's, 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 yeah, there's a bigger impact than going to someone else's country and winning it. It's a bit like if the Matildas won the World Cup. It would be, again, a massive impact over on Australia. Although most of the Matildas do do their football overseas now, but it, it's a massive impact over there. If they'd won it in Spain, you know the Barcelona fans will turn up for the team and you will see those massive crowds for Spain. Um, they were filling out stadium after stadium every time Spain play. And then they eventually they would filter out into other games when they, people can't get tickets. And I think it would be a bigger impact in Spain than it had than it would have been in Australia. But I get where she's I coming think, from. I think that's a fair point, but I really do think also surprised no. that the Spanish no. FA have done nothing after the Ruby no. Alice stuff. No. I would be interested to find out what's going to happen. Sorry, I didn't cut you off. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because the Champions League final is actually going to be in Bilbao this season, so I'm, I'll be interested to see how. Big 
the capacity because Adam, you were in Einhoven for the final, weren't you, for Barcelona? That was amazing. Leon, uh, Wolfsburg. Uh, uh, yeah, no, Barcelona, Wolfsburg. I mean, Barcelona took over Einhoven. Um, I will. I mean, we've, we've seen we've seen footage of the red and white doing their fan marches from like the was it the Tollington or the or the Corona, wherever it is, to the stadium. Um, Barcelona put that to shame, and that's not a bad thing on the Arsenal. But Barcelona do that at times, like ten or factorial ten. It's it's, it's amazing what they do. But the problem is, is that's Barcelona. I, you look at the rest of that league. Nothing. They are they are an outlier, not the norm, and that's the real shame. And the World Cup hasn't balanced that out. So um, yeah. Uh, no, unfortunately, it's what it is for now. But hopefully. The rest of the league will follow Barcelona's example. I mean, we're trying, we're setting the example here in the WSL, um, and I am proud of the fact that we are. Maybe um, that's also one of the other reasons is, that, sorry, Lottie, is that they're not very competitive. You always know it's very much like the Bayern Munich men's team. That, well, obviously, bar this season, mm. they are always. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Oof, everyone. That but, was a load of belt. First time in eleven years they haven't won the league. Uh, yeah, but essentially they're gonna. You always know that this Barcelona team is gonna win because they've yeah. invested so heavily. Real Madrid are catching up, but they're not able to hit those heights because they're see- even failing to uh, qualify for out of the group stage of the Champions yeah, League. A lot of Real Madrid's investments is in that younger generation. Should um, also say it's it's not just investment; it's also culture. It, yeah. It's club culture and the way it's not just throwing money at a team. It's the way that you treat the players and you treat them. Um, uh, you know, as the equivalent exactly. of Barcelona the male, the better. very much got that. Sorry, Adam. Barcelona yeah. very, very much got that one club mentan- mentality like yes. the Arsenal do. Absolutely. If not, it's a bit stronger than Arsenal. I'll be honest with you. It's been there no, that long. They, they, are, they are stronger on that front. And I think, I mean, Arsenal are doing that and you are seeing the benefits of it. You're seeing the benefits of it and that, that's, you know, other clubs take note. No, absolutely. Um, Stina Blackstenius was also back in action with Sweden. Um, she went head to head with uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina in a two, two leg. Oh, I, I do apologise. Thank you, Matt. Um, two leg relegation promotion match. Um, in the first leg, we saw Stina Black Stennis start top. Uh, she had a good 70 minutes to play. She was instrumental in their 5 0 win. We had a brace from Madeleine uh, Yanogi uh, uh, and goals also from Philippa Angeldahl. Pauline Hammerlund and Anna Anvigard. Anvigard? Um, next game is tomorrow night for the second leg. Uh, second leg is kicking off at half five tomorrow in the Nations League. Um, also in action in the Nations League was Frida Leonard's Mornham um, for Norway against a again a two leg relegation promotion match against Croatia. Um, in the first leg, Frida saw an impressive 22 minutes before being uh, substituted off for Karina uh, Savic. Uh, the result of that game was 3-0 with goals from Ida Hegerberg, Caroline Graham Hansen and Tottenham Celine Visit Ildesoy. Hey. Um, second leg in the Nation League was actually tonight. I did uh, have a glance over it. Frida did start off on the bench for this game. Um, Liverpool, Sophie Roman Hogg. And a bra- had a brace, and up, and the other goal came from Brighton's Elizabeth Turland during the first half. Second half, Frida came on, and she got herself a brace, uh, nice. making it five nil to Norway. How good is that to see from Frida coming off the bench, especially with Sunday coming up and uh, worries think, over Vivian Miedemann? Yes, exactly. This is the, this is the thing. Um, we can Frida hasn't quite hit the heights. Of last season, um, I hope this will give her a bit of a confidence boost going into the uh, into the derby. Should I say who was that? What was that um, two legged tie against the Norwegian game? Who was it? Was playing oh, against? The, uh, Norway. They're playing Croatia. 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 Um, I was I'm very intrigued by this because obviously I think Norway did ditch their manager, didn't they? Um, the, Risa. Uh, Hegarisa. Um, yeah, she's <laughs> those sh- shackles have been released and Lifted. finally. Yeah. Uh, Leon Haas and Morning can actually run free okay, and do what okay. she did best last season. Um, I hope it bodes well because we're going to need her in that yes. 10. Yeah, we, we're going to potentially need her in the, in the 10 again to discuss what we'll probably have in our preview pod. But um, her finding some form will uh, will benefit us. Um, it's just whether, again, she can find that relationship with Russo, Russo Stark, which 
you never know. If it's been a stance, we know they two can play, play off each other quite well. Yep. Great Sierra Monster goals. Um, a brace. Did you say it was a brace in the previous game as well? Uh, no, she got 72 minutes in the last game and then she was ah. subbed off. So she's just had a brace in this, in this game Just two goals tonight. in this round. Yeah, um, this game no. was on while the England game was on. So I was just keeping an eye on Sky Sports yeah. for that one. And great, BBC. Great Sierra Monster goals and um, hope this K rated over herself. Um, and best of luck to Norway. Um, that means they, they will stay up and Croatia will actually drop down. As that works, isn't it? They'll both they will stay in the same leagues. Stay down. They, will stay, they, they will stay in their same leagues, yeah. Yeah. All right, guys, we're nearly there at the end of our international watch. A few more players to go through. Um, our Australian spy, it's Spine. <laughs> spy? <laughs> this has <is> got <laughs> espionage <laughs> down under. <laughs> Sorry, what Her was that? Adam? Cross, Kyra Cooney Cross. <laughs> yes. Um, right, let's start that again. <laughs> <laughs> Our Australian spine in Steph Catley, Kyra Cooney Cross, and Caitlin Ford all competing for an Olympic spot as well with the Matildas um, against a double header against Uzbekistan. 24th of February, uh, we saw Steph Catley and Kyra Cooney Cross start for the Matildas um, against them. Uh, with Caitlin Ford on the bench. The result for that game was ended in 3-0 to the Matildas with goals from Michelle Heyman, Mary Fowler and the one and only Caitlin Ford. Um, we, they all scored in the second half in very quick succession. So I think once they got one in, the goals were starting to leak. Um, their next, The second leg is on the 28th of February. Um, it'll be 9.10pm UK time. Um so if you're in a different time zone, can please check out where you can watch it and what time it will be. Matt, could they book their spot in the Olympics at this point? Bearing in mind, it's 3-0 on aggregate to them. It's very similar when, you, it was when you're 5-0 up against someone. You you imagine you might as, you could almost forfeit, but you still still go through through and qualify it anyway, or you stay in your Nations League. So I imagine that, with the way Australia are, they are very much Olympic um, continuers. They haven't, I don't believe they've missed a Olympics in football when it comes to football for a long time. I can't, I can't even give you a date, but I'm pretty sure since women's football was in there, Australia have been one of the teams that have been put there. I'm surprised it was only three and that's no disrespect to Uzbekistan. It's just you've got some top top talent, and you... absolutely, and it took them nearly six to eight minutes to get through. Yeah, so, so it it just goes to show you there is quality in in the um, Oceania and uh, Asia con- uh, confederations. It's just trying to find them, but fair play to Uzbekistan for lasting that long. You, I mean, you saw how. Other teams have been like Latvia. I think it took us about five minutes to break the break them down. Was essentially it was Latvia under twenty ones that day, and we ended up winning twenty one one or something ridiculous like that. Twenty nil, I think it something, was something like, something like that. It, it was it was it was a ridiculous scoreline. Yeah. Um, on our other international watch, we've got Manuela Zinsberger. She faced England. The other night, which we will come back to, and tomorrow night on the 28th of Feb, she will face Katrin Molokou and again with Denmark. Uh, Leah Volte, Volte um, is captain in on her international break as well. Um, in the first game, she was left out of the squad, squad due to a rumoured minor knee injury, um, which by the looks of things was only a niggle. Um, as in the second leg tonight, she did captain. Switzerland against Poland, but then fortunately they did lose one nil tonight. Again, that was on when we were watching England v Italy. Um, Kate and McCabe is also losing the line for Ireland in their friend friendlies against Italy and Wales. Um, McCabe led out her side um, against Italy and held a nil-nil draw. They're currently playing Wales um, as we record this podcast, and unfortunately, Wales are beating them two nil with twenty five minutes in. To the game, they are. They have got a new manager, Wales. Uh, mm-hmm. So they're getting the uh, new manager bands. But again, if you want a full scoreline, please do keep on whatever platform you use to keep an eye on the teams. 
we are going to do something a little tiny bit different with our international watch we are going to go and look towards our academy girls uh we did have five call-ups for the uh under 19s england team um so fresh from a senior debut at the conti cup against the london city lionesses lionesses vivian Liart has rec uh, received her call up to the under 19s england squad how excited are we for her boys excellent it, she's the ultimate combination of two arsenal legends as we know um great to see her get a uh, call up because this is one of the things i've actually tried to do with uh, when serena's come in is they've tried to reset up reset up uh reintroduce you know uh the the, the youth ladder to get the young talent through um so this is good to see it's good to see um there's been they've been picked for this and i'm sure she will do her country proud um we, i was lucky enough at um at moment see lionesses when she came on and she was uh, shooting towards our end so we saw the talent she had and she she, she had no fear she said I'm, I'm just gonna express myself it may not come off but she she wasn't afraid to try it she had a lovely little turn in the corner where she tried to, to be a player so she she has got the talent um obviously you know more more coaching more training needed and this call up to the uh, national team the, the youth levels uh, will do our world of good it helps so much with their development as well it's the, uh, you look at someone like anna Patton, who has been in the england setup all the way up to 20 under 23s um i've been lucky enough to actually see her play for the under 23s um because they do go a bit of uh, stadium hopping, so not just it's not just Wembley or anything like this. If they do go to local areas. Sometimes it's Burton, sometimes it's Middlesbrough, sometimes it's uh, over towards Liverpool. There's there's so many things that they do, and it's great to see that there's going to be other pla there's players there that are very young, um, that maybe if they have a local team uh missy Bobby hearns was there when i when i saw her so local local hero and people's heart people's eyes it's, it's just one of those things at the end of the day that people like to see and it's an additional bit of appreciate yeah and we're looking forward to it. I, I remember actually at that game saying how much i really loved um the southampton keeper kaylin rendell um kayla rendell even as uh, she was a fantastic goalkeeper and i've watched her play every single time she just brings a smile to my face and it's things like that that i look forward to a lot when you see one of your own come through the academy vivian lee uh, when i did see a little bit of the game at london city lionesses she was really controlled and she looked like she was an older head on her shoulders so I'll be interested to see what happens next season, if she goes out on a dual loan or not. Now, absolutely. Also getting the Arsenal call-ups was Michelle Adjimang and Maddie Earl. Um, they are taking part in La Nuncia tournament over um, over in Spain for the in preparation for the, the UEFA Women's Championships qualifying. Um, unfortunately, Katie Reid and Freya Godfrey have been withdrawn from the squad. Um, this could be due to ongoing niggles or injuries um so we're not too quite sure what happened there but there's only three arsenal players in the under 19s now um on the 24th of february they did take on france at the camillo cano sports city at, um city um unfortunately we lost 3-2 um to them um we had michelle amajiman get the brace and vivian lua get her first assist for england so but interim um women's under 19s head coach john griffiths will did take charge in the warm weather camp as well um it is a part of the preparations for the uefa euro qualifying against italy switzerland portugal and portugal in april um, we will keep you up to date to see how they progress because the finals are in lithuania in july um so we kind of opened the game up 2-0 and then we went down 3-2. How good does it feel to hear the Arsenal girls are doing the bits, Adam? Very good, very good. It's good, it's good to see that they are um, doing our country proud and obviously repping, repping our club on the international scene. And as we said earlier, we were talking about um, uh, the likes of um, Vivian Lear, um, the experience of doing the world of good. Just the same about the result. Um, would have been nice if we could have got the win, especially to see we went 2-0 up. Um, 
yeah, that they'll learn from that. That's that's obviously about mentality and, and, and concentration. And yeah, you have at two 0 you have the win. Um, so that should hopefully um, put them in a good stead going forward if they learn from those mistakes. But yeah, great to see the Arsenal flag flying high for our country. You know, we we are massive, <laughs> and, and this is proving it. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I mean, Adam, it, well, sorry, Matt. I mean, <laughs> um, England. We did take the lead in the 18th minute, Matt. Um, with Vivian Leo. Um, she did well to beat two defenders on the wide left. She and cross for Adjumang and see the ball direct into the far corner from close range. Uh, then France when it equalised 20 minutes later um, via Charlene Coutel um, from the cross off the crossbar at 20 yards out. Um, Adjumang then had to go and do one better at the half hour mark. Um, I mean can we can we are we looking forward to having her back for first team football if she's going to start taking those bangers like Katie McCabe? Yes. Um but it's a case of making sure that it's the right time and making sure that she feels that like she's ready. There's no point in throwing her under the bus so so to say and um say say not say start the opening game of the season say if it's against Liverpool again you don't want her to be starting that you've got to give her time to adapt I mean some players it's taken them to go out on loan we've mentioned Jess Park um Grace Clinton um Grace Clinton we're going to come to her but she's another player who's gone out on loan and now her career is accelerating and Katrine Cole as well so yeah, yeah it is about getting those minutes yeah, as as you just stolen the words out of my mouth, Adam. <laughs> that, it, it, again, it's all about getting that ta- talent and getting it the right amount of time. The fact that she's gone to Watford and she is actually their top goal scorer this season, considering they're in a relegation battle, is a huge intent on how even their manager has said that they've got such a huge. That all the Arsenal players are bringing them up because they they are that talented, but they aren't ready for that. But the other players aren't at that level that they are so again it's about making sure that they're going to the right clubs and continuing and growing developing as players as a whole no absolutely i couldn't agree you more um for now this is all all of our teams all of our players for the international watch we will be back with our england girls in just well, in the next episode. Um, there's so much to cover tonight. You're not getting just one episode, you're getting two. Um, so we will catch up with you in the next episode. Mm-hmm.